Hello and welcome to this second look exploring session looking at the play of Wit and Science by John Redford. We've done a first look exploring session. We've gone through the whole, pretty much the whole play in relatively excessive detail in a workshop that we did a year, maybe two years ago. It's, it, time <laughs> is an illusion in the Zoom space. Um, but um, we have we have done a reasonable amount of uh, work on this. But we haven't actually run it at pace all the way through without stopping. Uh, and that is what Second Looks are all about. So uh, we won't be reading stage directions. Uh, some of us may occasionally try to uh, enact what's going on. Uh, there are various bits of business to do with uh, clothing changes, uh, makeup changes that we may or may not be able to demonstrate particularly clearly. There are various songs of which we are mostly just marking. We do have the lyrics to most of the songs uh, in the text, but uh, we don't have any music. And trying to sing in unison on Zoom is a nightmare. So uh, basically not not possible. So uh, uh, a lot of the songs have just been handed to an individual to uh, to work through and they're not necessarily going to actually sing, um, but uh, some of them may valiantly have a go anyway for uh, the sake of uh, the, the, the sense of how it all flows. Um, so hopefully this is going to give you a better idea of how the text functions or us a better idea of how the text functions at pace. Um, sadly, the play is sans an opening. Uh, we uh, know that uh, science, played by Sarah, um, uh, has, uh, has, has fallen in love with wit, played by Leaky, um, uh, uh, young buck, uh, having been sent uh, his <coughs> picture. So it's it's a long long distance romance. Uh, just seen the 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 picture um, on on you know whatever dating app uh, that they're using, um, and uh, so Wit is is going on a journey to m visit her and marry her, um, and in a moment, re uh, Reason, uh, who is uh, Science's uh, uh, dad is uh, going to make sure that Wit goes on his journey with, with instruction. And there's lots of alle allegorical characters being played by all of the various people here. Uh, so uh, Lynn will be playing Diligence. Uh, I will be playing Study and various other parts. Uh, Alan will be uh, the uh, character of uh, Tediousness as well as Experience. And Eric will be Confidence idleness and various others none of the parts have necessarily been uh, cast uh, for accuracy as to uh, the appropriateness of who they should be um, uh, uh, but uh, hopefully they will all make sense in a moment we will first encounter uh, Kyle as reason uh, and I said the full uh, cast listing will be in the show description have a look at there for all the parts that we are in theory playing most of us have two sometimes three parts uh, to dance around uh, uh, as opposed to Aliki who only is playing the protagonist Wit. So, uh, Wit is about to go on a journey. Uh, where we pick up where the manuscript uh, gives us some text as uh, reason and instruction uh, are holding the floor. Wit potentially study and diligence and in, uh, are in the room as well. Take it away, reason. Then, in remembrance of reason, hold ye a glass of reason, wherein behold ye yourself to yourself. Namely, when you come to near my daughter, science, then see that all things be clean and trick about ye, lest of some sluggishness she might doubt ye. This glass of reason shall show ye all, while ye have that, ye have me, and shall. Get ye forth now, instruction, farewell. Sir, God keep ye. And ye all from peril. If any man now marvel that I would bestow my daughter thus basely, of truth I reason am of this mind. Where parties together be inclined, by gifts of graces to love each other, there let them join the one with the other. This wit, such gifts of graces hath in him, that maketh my daughter to wish to win him. Young, painful, tractable, capix, these be wit's gifts which science doth axe. And as for her, as soon as wit sees her, for all the world he would not then lease her. Wherefore, since thy both be so meet matches to love each other, draw for the patches of worldly muck. Science hath enough for them both to live. If wit be through stricken in love, as he since hath showed, I doubt not my daughter well bestowed. The end of his journey will prove all. If wit hold out, no more proof can fall. And that the better hold out he may, to refresh me soon, wit, 
now by the way, some solace for him I will provide. An honest woman dwelleth here beside, whose name is called Honest Recreation. As men report, for wit's consolation, she hath no peer. If wit were half dead, she could revive him. Thus it is said, wherefore, if money or love can hire her, to high after wit, I will desire her. Ah, sir, what time of day is it? Who can tell? The day is not far past. Now what well, for I've gone fast, and yet I see I'm far from where as I would be. Well, I have day enough yet, I espy. If it were, where I pass hence now, must I see this same token here, a plain case, what with hath sent to my lady's grace? Now will you see a good picture, a goodly picture of wit himself, his own image, sure, face, body, arms, legs, both limb and joint as like him as can be in every point. It lacketh but life. Well, I can him thank. This token indeed shall make some crank for what with this picture so well favoured, and with those sweet words so well savoured, distilling from the mouth of confidence. Shall not this appease the heart of science? Yes, I thank God I am of that nature, able to compass this matter sure, as ye shall see now who list to mark it, how nearly and feebly I shall work it. Now, sirs, come on, which is the way now, this way or that way? Study, how say you? Speak yeah. diligence while he hath bethought him. Well, that way, belike, most usage hath wrought him. Mm, yea, hold your peace. Best we here now stay for instruction. I like not that way. Instruction, study? I, I win we have lost him. Indeed, full gently about ye have tossed him. What mean you, wit, still to delight, running before thus, still out of sight, and thereby out of your way now, quite? What do ye hear, except he would fight? Uh, come back again, wit, for I must choose ye an easier way than this, or else lose ye. What aileth this way? Peril here is none. But as much as your life standeth upon, your enemy man lieth here before ye. Tediousness to brain or to gore ye. Tediousness? Doth that tyrant rest in my way now? Lord, how am I blessed that occasion so near me stirs for my dear heart's sake to win my spurs. Sir, would ye fear me with that foul thief with whom to meet my desire is chief. And what would ye do, ye having naught for your defence? For, though ye have caught garments of science upon your back, yet weapons of science ye do lack. What weapons of science should I have? Such as all lovers of their loves crave. A token from Lady Science whereby hope of her favour may spring, and thereby comfort, which is the weapon doubtless, that must serve you against tediousness. If hope or comfort may be my weapon, then never with tediousness me threaten, for as hope of my dear heart's favour, and thereby comfort, enough I gather. Wit, hear me. Till I see confidence have brought some token from Lady Science, that I may feel she favoureth you, ye pass not this way, I tell you true. Which way, then? A plainer way, I told ye, out of danger from your foe to hold ye. Instruction, hear me, or my sweetheart shall hear that wit from that wretch shall start. One foot? This body and all shall crack. Forth I will, sure, whatever I lack. If ye lack a weapon, here is one. Well said, diligence. Thou art alone. How say ye, sir? I is there not here weapon? With that weapon your enemy never threaten. For without the return of confidence, ye may be slain, sure, for all diligence. Good sir, and diligence. I tell you plain, will play the man, or my master be slain. Yea, but what saith study? No word to this? 
No, sir. You know, study's office is meet for the chamber, not for the field. But tell me, study, wilt thou now yield? Mm, my head acheth sore. I would we returned. My head ache now. I would it were burned. Come on, walking may have to ease thee. And will you be gone then, without me? Yea, by my faith, except ye high after. Reason shall know ye are but a hafter. Well, go your way. When your father reason heareth how ye obey me at this season, I think he will think his daughter now may marry another man for you. When wits stand so in their own conceit, best let them go, till pride, at his height, turn and cast them down headlong again, and ye shall see proved by this wit plain. If reason hap not to come, the rather his own destruction he will sure gather. Wherefore to reason will I now get me, leaving that charge whereabout he set me. Oh, the body of me, what cases be those that will not once flee, and tedious as snows that thus disease me out of my nest, when I should ease me, this body to rest, that wit, that villain, that wretch, a shame take him, it is he blame, that thus bold doth make him, without my license, to stalk by my door, to that drab, science, to wed that whore, but I defy her, and for that drab's sake, all wit come nigher, the knave's head shall ache, these bones, this mull, shall beat him to dust, for that drab shall once quench that knave's lust, but ha, ah, methinks, I am not half lusty, these joints, these links, be rough and half rusty, I must go shake em, supple to make em, stand back, ye wretches, beware the fetches, the tediousness, these caitiffs to bless, they grow, I say, round every way. This way, that way, what cares, what way? Before me, behind me, round about, wind me. Now I begin to sweat in my skin. Now am I nimble, to make them tremble. Pash head, pash brain, the knaves are slain. All that I hit, where art thou, wit? Thou art the dead, off goeth thy head. At the first blow, oh, 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 oh. Study. Here, sir. How doth thy head ache? Yea, oh. God, what, sir? Much pain I do take. Diligence? Here, sir, here. How dost thou? Doth thy stomach serve thee to fight now? Yea, sir, and yonder wretch, a vengeance on him that threateneth you thus. Set even upon him. Upon him, diligence, better nay. Better nay, study. Why should we fray? For I am weary, my head aches sore. Why, foolish study, thou shalt do no more, but aid my master with thy presence. No more shalt thou neither, diligence, aid me with your presence, both you twain, and for my love, myself shall take pain. Sir, we be ready to aid you so. I ask no more. Study. Come on, then, let's go. Why art thou come? Yea, wretch, to thy pain. Then have at thee. Have at thee again. Lie thou there. Now have you at ye caitiffs. Ye flee, faith, the horse and thieves. By Mahone's bones, had the wrenches tarried, their necks without heads they should have carried. Yea, by Mahone's nose, might I have plotted them. In twenty gobbets I should have squatted them. To teach the knaves to come near the snout, the tediousness walk further about. I trow now they will, and as for thee, thou wilt no more now trouble me. Yea, lest the knave be not safe enough, the horse and shall bear me another cuff. Still, Katie, and take thy rest while I take mine in mine own nest. When travels great in matters thick have dulled your wits and made them sick, what medicine then your wits to quick 
if ye will know the best physic is to give place to honest recreation give place we say now for thy consolation where is that wit that we seek then alas he lieth here pale and wan help him at once now if we can oh wit how dost thou look up man a wit give place to honest recreation give place we say now for thy consolation after place given let ear obey give an ear o wit now we thee pray give an ear to that we sing and say give an ear and help will come straightway give an ear to honest recreation give an ear now for thy consolation after ear given now give an eye behold thy friends about thee lie recreation i and comfort i quickness am i and strength thereby give an eye to honest recreation give an eye now for thy consolation after i given an hand give ye give an hand o wit feel that ye see recreation feel feel comfort free feel quickness here feel strength to thee give an hand to honest recreation give an hand now for thy consolation upon his feet would god he were to raise him now we need not fear stay you his hands while we him bear now all at once upright him rear oh wit give place to honest recreation <laughs> give place we say now for thy consolation now wit how do ye will ye be lusty the lustier for you needs be must i be ye all whole yet after your fall as ever i was thanks to you all Ye might thank reason that sent them to ye, but since they have done that, they should, do ye send them home soon, and get ye forward? Oh, Father Reason, I have had an hard chance since ye saw me. I wot well that, the more to blame ye, when ye would not obey instruction, as reason willed ye. What marvel though tediousness had killed ye? But let pass now, since ye are all well again set forward against science to attain good father reason be not too hasty in honest company no time waste i i shall to your daughter at all leisure yea wit is that the great love ye raise her i say if ye love my daughter science get ye forth at once and get ye hence nay by saint george they go not all yet no Will ye disobey reason, wit? Father reason, I pray ye, content ye, for we part not yet. Well, wit, I went ye had been no such man as now I see. Farewell. He is angry. Nay, let him be. I do not pass. Come now, a bass. Nay, sir, as for basses, from hence none passes, but as engage of marriage. Marry, even so, a bargain, lo. What, without license of lady science? Shall I tell you truth? I never loved her. The common voice goeth that marriage ye moved her. Promise hath she none, if we shall be one, without more words grant. What, upon this sudden? Then might ye plain bid me avaunt, nay, let me see in honesty what ye can do to win recreation upon that probation I grant thereto. Small be my doings, but up to all things I am, I trust. Can ye dance then? Even as I can, prove me ye must. Then for a while ye must exile this garment cumbering. Indeed, as you say, this cumbrous array would make wit slumbering. It is gay gear of science clear. It seemeth her array. Whosoever it were, it lieth now. There. Go to, my men. Play. Sweetheart, grum mercy. Why, whither now have ye done since? Yea, in faith. 
With weary bones ye have possessed me. Among these damsels now will I rest me. What, there? Yea, here I will be so bold. Yea, and welcome by him that God sold. It is an harlot. May ye not see? As honest a woman as ye be. Her name is Idleness. Wait, what mean you? Nay, <laughs> what mean you to scold thus? You queen, you. There, go to. Lo, now for the best game, while I take my ease, your tongues now frame. Yea, wit, by your faith, is that your fashion? Will ye leave me, will ye leave me honest recreation, that for that common strumpet idleness, the very root of all viciousness? She saith she is as honest as ye. Declare ye yourselves both now as ye be. What would ye more, more for my declaration than even my name, Honest Recreation? And what would ye more her to express than even her name too, Idleness? Destruction of all that with her tarry, wherefore come away with, she will marry ye. Will I mar him, drab? Thou fallest thou, when thou hast marred him already now, that callest thou thyself honest recreation, ordering a poor man after this fashion to lame him thus, and make his limbs fail, even with the swing there of thy tail. <laughs> Devil set fire on thee, for now must I, idleness, heal him again, I spy. I must now lull him, rock him, and frame him to his lust again, where thou didst lay him. Am I the root, sayest thou, of viciousness? Thou art, nay, thou art root of all vice, doubtless. Thou art occasion, though, of more evil than I. Poor girl, nay, more than the devil. The devil in his dam cannot devise more devilishness than by thee doth arise. Under the name of honest recreation, she lo bringeth in her abomination. Mark her dancing, her masking, her mumming, where more concupiscence than their coming, her carding, her dicing daily and nightly, where find ye more falsehood than their, not lightly, with lying and swearing by no poppets, but tearing God in a thousand gobbets. As for her singing, piping, and Fiddling! What unthriftiness there in is, therein is twiddling. Search the taverns, and there ye shall hear clear. Such bawdry as beasts would spare it as food to hear. And yet, this is called honest recreation. <laughs> and I, for idleness, abomination. But which is worst of us twain? Now judge wit. Fire lady, not thou, wench. I judge yet. No. Is your judgment such, then, that ye can neither perceive that beast, how she goeth about to deceive you, nor yet remember how I saved your life wit? Think you her meet with me to compare, by whom so many wits cured are? When will she do such an act as I did, saving your life when I you revive it? And as I saved you, so save I all, that in like jeopardy chance to fall. When tediousness to ground hath smitten them, honest recreation up doth quicken them. With such honest pastimes, sports or games, as to mine honest nature frames, and not, as she saith, with pastimes such as be abused little or much. For where honest pastimes be abused, honest recreation is refused. Honest recreation is present never, but where honest pastimes be well used ever. But indeed, idleness, she is the cause of all such abuses. She, lo, drawers! Her sought to abuse mine honest games, and thereby full falsely my name defames. Under the name of honest recreation, she bringeth in all her abomination, destroying all wits that her embrace, as yourself shall see, 
within a short space, she will bring you to shameful end wit, except the sooner from her ye flit. Wherefore, come away wit, out of her pores. Hence, drab, let him go out of thy claws. Well, get ye, get ye hence, or by the mace, these claws shall claw you by your drab's face. Ye shall not need, since wit lieth as one that neither heareth nor seeth, I am gone. Yea, so farewell. And fare well that fare thou, tongue of a short peel. This peel was well rung to wring her hence and fast asleep, as full of sloth as the knave can creep. How wit awake, how doth my baby? Neque vox neque sensus by our lady. A meat man for idleness, no doubt. <laughs> Hark, my pig, how the knave doth rout. Well, while he sleepeth in idleness lap, idleness mark on him shall I clap. Some say that idleness cannot mark, but those that so say, now let them mark. I trow they shall see that idleness can set herself about some business. Or... At the least, you shall see her tried, neither idle nor well occupied. Oh, sir, ye lack another toy. Where is my whistle to call my boy? Oh, I come, I come. Come, come on, ye fool, all this day, or ye can come to school? Uh, mother will not let me come. I would thy mother had kissed thy bum. She will never let thee thrive, I trow. Come on, goose. Now, lo. Men shall know that idleness can do somewhat, yea, and play the schoolmistress too, if need be. Mark what doctrine by idleness comes. Say thy lesson, fool. Upon my thumbs. Yea, upon thy thumbs. Is not there thy name? Y yes. Go to then, spell me that same. Where wast thou born? Twas it born in England, mother said. In England. Yea. And what's half England? Here's ink and here's land. What's tis? What's tis? What's tis, Horson? What's tis? Here's ink and here's land. What's tis? Tis my thumb. Thy thumb. <laughs> ink, Horson. Ink, ink, ink. Ink, 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 ink. For shall I beat thine arse now? Um... Shall I not beat thine arse now? Um, um, um... Say no, fool, say no. No, 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 no. Go to put together ing. Ing. No. No. Forth now, what saith the dog? Dog bark. Dog bark, dog run. Dorson, dog run. Dog rumph, horse and dog rumph, dog rumph. Put together ing. Ing. No. No. Run. Run. Forth now, what saith the goose? Ah, ah. It's horse and hiss. 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 Go to put together ing. Ing. No. No. Run. Run. Hiss. Hiss. Now, who is a good boy? I, 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 I. Go to put together ing. Ing. No. No. Ran. Ran. His. His. I. I. Ignoran his I. Ignoran his. I. I. Ing. Ing. Fourth. His. Yea, no, horse, no. No, 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 no. Ing. No. Ing, no. Fourth now. Shh. Yes, yes, yes. Ran, horse, and ran, ran. Ran, horse, and ran, ran. Ran, say. Ran, say. Ran, horse, and. Ran, horse, and. Ran. Ran. Ig, no, ran. Ig, no, ran. Ignoran. Uh, Ignoran. Forth now, what said the goose? Dog bark. Dog bark. It's horse and his. His. I ignoran his eye. Ignoran his eyes. I. 
I. Mao says now, fool. Is not there thy name? Yay! Well then, can you that same? What ha that? What hast thou learned? I cannot tell. I cannot tell. Thou sayest even well, for if thou couldst not tell, then I had not well taught thee thy lesson, which must be taught to tell all when thou canst tell right not. I can my lesson. Yea, and therefore it shall have a new coat. By God, I swore. <gasps> a new coat? Yea, a new coat by and by. <gasps> Off with this old coat, a new coat. Cry. A new coat, a new coat, a new coat. <laughs> Peace. Norrison, fool, wilt thou wake him now? Unbutton thy coat, fool. Canst do nothing? I, I, I know how cold be. <laughs> I know how cold be a fool betide thee. So wisely it speaketh. Come on now, when? Put back thine arm, fool. Put back? So low. Now let me see how this gear will trim this gentleman that lieth here. God save he so sweetly it doth sleep while on your back this gay coat can creep. As feet as can be for this one arm. Oh, I'm a cold. Hold, fool, keep thee warm and come hither. Hold this head here. Now, soft now for waking. Ye shall see one here brought in such taking that he shall soon scantily know himself. Here is a coat as fit for this elf. As had it had been made even for this body. So it beginneth to look like a noddy. Uh, uh, what ailest now, fool? New coat is gone. And why is it gone? It will not bide on. It will not bide on. Would if it could, but marvel that it were that it should. Science is garment on ignorance's back. But now, let's see, sir. What do you lack? Nothing but even to buckle here this throat. So well this weight becometh a fool's coat. <gasps> he is I now. Yea, how likest him now? Is he not a fool as well as thou? Yes. Well then, one fool keep another. Give me this and take thou that brother. Uh, uh... Pike thee home, go. Shall go tell my mother. Yea, do. Yet to take my leave of my dear low with the skipper twain, here low and here low and here again, and now this heel to bless his weak brain. Now are ye weal by virtue of idleness blessing tool, conjured from wit unto a stark fool. I seek and I seek as no as one on no ground can rest, but like a masterless hound wandering about seeking his master. Alas, gentle wit, I fear the foster that my true service cleaveth unto thee, and the slacker of my mind, thy mind cleaveth unto me. I have done my, thy message in such sort, that I not only for thy comfort to vanquish thine enemy have brought here a sword of comfort from thy love dear, but also further I have so inclined her that upon my words she hath assigned her in her own person halfway to meet thee. And hitherward she came for to greet thee. And sure, except she be turned again, hither will she come or be long plain to seek or to meet thee here in this coast. But now, alas, thyself thou hast lost, or at the least thou wilt not be found. Alas, gentle wit, how dost thou wound thy, th thou wound thy trusty and true servant confidence to lease my credence to lady science? Thou leasest me too, for if I cannot find thee shortly, longer live may I not, but shortly get me even into a corner and die for sorrow those through such a scorner. Come, sirs, let us not disdain to do that the world hath appointed us to. Since to serve science the world hath sent us to as the world willeth, willeth us, let us content us. Can 
content us we may, since we be assigned to the fairest lady that liveth in my mind. Then Worship. let us not stay here and mutant mum, but taste we these instruments till she come. Exceeding measure with pains continual, languishing in absence, alas, what shall I do? Unfortunate wretch, devoid of joys all, sighs upon sighs redumbling my woe, and tears down falling from my eyes too. Beauty with truth so doth me constrain, ever to serve where I may not attain. Truth bindeth me ever to be true, how so that fortune favoreth my chance. During my life, none other but you of my true heart shall have the governance. O oh, good sweetheart, have you remembrance? Now of your own, which for no smart, exile shall you from my true heart. Water meaneth that ye did not sing. O oh, mother, for here remaineth a thing. Friends, we thank you for these your pleasures taken on us as chance to us measures. Uh, lady, these pleasures and persons too are sent to you, you service. Lady Science, to set forth your name, the world to wait on you hath sent me fame. Lady Science, for your virtues most plenty, the world to cherish you, favour have sent ye. Lady Science, for your benefits known, the world to maintain you riches has thrown. And as the world hath sent you these three, so he sendeth me worship to advance your degree. I thank thee, world, but chiefly, God be praised, that in the world such love to science hath raised. But yet, to tell you plain, if for are such, a science looketh for little nor much. For being as I am a lone woman, need of your service I neither have nor can. But thanking the world and you for your pain, I send you to the world even now again. Why, lady, set ye no more store by me worship? Ye set not by yourself, I see. She setteth not by fame, whereby I spy her. She careth not what the world saith by her. She setteth not by favour, whereby I try her. She careth not what the world saith or doth by her. She setteth not by riches which doth show she careth not for the world. Come, let us go. <laughs> Indeed, small cause given to care for the world's favouring, seeing the wits of the world be so wavering. Is the matter, daughter, that ye be so sad? Open your mind to me. My marvel is no less, my good mother, than my grief is great to see of all other the proud scorn of wit, some son to dame nature who sent me a picture of his stature with all the shape of himself there opening his amorous love thereby betokening born toward me in abundant fashion and also father to make right relation of this his love he put in commission such a messenger as no suspicion could grow in me of him confidence um who i assure ye with such vehemence and faithful behaviour in his moving set forth the pith of his master's loving that no living creature could conject but that pure love did that wit direct so now this being since the space of three times sending from place to place between wit wit and his man I hear no more, neither of wit, nor his love so sore. How think you by this, my own mother, dear mother? Daughter, in this I can think none other, but that it is true, this proverb old. Hasty love is soon hot and soon cold. Take heed, daughter, how you put your trust to light lovers, too hot at the first. For had this love of wit been grounded, and on a sure foundation founded, little void time would have been between ye, but that this wit would have seen, sent or seen ye. I think so. Yea, think ye so or no? Your mother, experience proof shall show. 
that wit has set his love, I dare say, and make ye warrantise another way. But you warrant her eyes, warrant no troth. Fair lady, I pray you be not wroth till you hear more, for, dear lady, science, had your lover wit, yea, or confidence, his man been in health, all this time spent long, or this time wit had come or sent, but the truth is, they have been both sick, a wit and his man, yea, with pains thick, both stayed by the way, so that your lover could neither come nor send by none other, wherefore blame not him, but chance of sickness. Who is this? Ignorancy, or his likeness. What, the common fool? With as much like him. By my sooth, his tongue serveth him now trim. What sayest thou, ignorancy? Speak again. Nay, lady, I am not ignorancy. Plain, but I, I am your own dear lover, wit, that hath long loved you and loveth you yet. Wherefore, I pray thee now, my own sweeting, let me have a kiss at this our meeting. Uh, yea, so ye shall anon, but not yet. Oh, sir, this fool here hath got some wit. For you to kissing, sir, nowadays, your mother shall charm you. Go your ways. What, what needeth all this, my love of long grown? Will you be so strange to me, your, your own? Your acquaintance to me was thought easy, but now your words make my heart all queasy. Your darts at me so strangely be shot. Hear ye what terms this fool here hath got? Well, I perceive my foolishness now. Indeed, uh, ladies, no dastards allow. I will be bold with my own darling. Come now. Abass my own proper sparling. What wilt thou, arrant fool? Nay, by the mass I will have a bass, or I hence pass. What wilt thou, arrant fool? Hence, fool, I say. Nothing fool and fool all this day by the mass, madam. Ye can no good. Art a swearing too? Now, by my hood, your foolishness, knave's breech, six stripes shall bear. Yea, God's bones, fool and knave too. Ye there? By the mass, call me fool once again, and thou shalt sure call a blow or twain. Come away, daughter, the fool is mad. Nay, nor yet neither hence ye shall gad. We will gree better, or ye pass hence. I pray thee now, good, sweet lady science, all this strange manner now, hide and cover and play the good fellow with thy lover. What good fellowship would ye of me, whom ye know not, neither yet I know ye? Know ye not me? No, how should I know ye? Doth not my picture my person show ye? Your picture? <laughs> Yea, my picture, lady, that ye spake of. Who sent it but I? If that be your picture, then shall we soon see how you and your picture agree. Lo, here the picture that I named is this. Yea, marry my own likeness, this is. You having this, lady, and so loath to know me, which this so plain showeth. Why, you're nothing alike in mine eye. No? How say ye? As she saith, so say I. Oh, by the mass, then you're both stark blind. What difference between this and this can you find? Mary, this is fair, pleasant, and goodly, and ye are foul, displeasant, and ugly. Oh, Mary, avaunt thou foul, ugly whore! <gasps> so low! Now I perceive ye more and more. What, perceive you me as ye would make me a natural fool? Nay, ye mistake me. I take ye for no fool naturel, but I take ye thus. Shall I tell all? Yea, marry, tell me your mind, I pray ye, whereto I shall trust. No more delay ye. I take ye for no natural fool, brought up amongst the innocent school, 
but for a naughty, vicious fool brought up with idleness in her school of all arrogant fools, thou art one. Yea, God's body. Come, let us be gone. My sword, is it God? A vengeance on them. Be they gone too, and then their heads upon them? My proud queans, the devil go with you both. Not one point of courtesy in them goeth. A man is well at ease by suit to pain him for such a drab that so doth disdain him, so mocked, so louted, so made a sot, Never was I, erst, since I was begot. Am I so foul as those drafts would make me? Where is my glass that reason did make me, take me? Now shall this glass of reason soon try me, as fair as those drabs that so doth belong me. Ha! God so? A fool? What have we here? A devil! This glass! I see well hath been kept evil, God's soul. A fool! A fool by the mass! What? A fairy vengeance! Hail it this glass? Either this glass is shamefully spotted, or else am I too shamefully blotted. Nay, by God's arms, I am so, no doubt. How look their faces here round about? All fair and clear, they every one, and I, by the mass, a fool, alone, decked by God's bones like a very ass, ignorance's coat, hood, ears, me by the mass, coxcomb and all, I lack but a bauble, and as for this face, it is abominable and black as the devil. God, for his passion, where have I been rayed after this fashion? This same idleness, a shame take her. This same is her work, the devil in hell rake her. The whore hath shamed me forever, I trow. I trow. Nay, verily, I know. Now it is so. The stark fool I play before all people. Now see it I may. Every man I see laugh me to scorn. <laughs> alas, alas, that ever I was born. It was not for naught. Now well I see that those two ladies disdain at me. Alas, <laughs> lady science of all other, how have I railed on her and her mother? Alas, that lady I have now lost. Whom all the world loveth and honoureth most. Alas, from reason had I not varied. Lady science, or this I had married. And those four gifts which the world gave her, I had won too, had I kept her favour. Where now, instead of that lady bride, with all those gallants seen in my sight, favour, riches, yea, worship and fame, I have won. Hatred, beggary. And open shame. Not upon thee, shame! What doest thou hear? Mary, I reason bade him here appear. Upon him, shame, with stripes he now smitten, while I rehearse his faults herein written. First, he hath broken his promise formerly made to me. Reason, my daughter to Mary. Next, he hath broken his promise promised to obey instruction, and him despise it. Thirdly, my daughter science to reprove, upon idleness he hath set his love. Fourthly, he hath followed idleness's school, till she hath made him a very stark fool. Lastly, offending both God and man, swearing great oaths as any man can, he hath abused himself <clears throat> to the great shame of all his kindred, and loss of his good name, Wherefore, spare him not, shame. Beat him well there. He hath deserved more than he can bear. O oh, Father Reason, be good unto me. Alas, these stripes of shame will undo me. Be still a while, shame. Wit, what sayest thou? 
Oh, so forgive me, I beseech you. If I forgive thee thy punishment, wilt thou then follow thy first intent and promise made my daughter to marry? Oh, sir, I am not worthy to carry the dust out where your daughter should sit. I wot well that, but if I admit thee, unworthy again to her wooer, wilt thou then follow thy suit unto her? Yea, sir, I promise you, while life endureth. Come near, masters, here is one insureth. In words to become an honest man, take him instruction, do what ye can. What to the purpose he went before? Yea, to my daughter prove him once more. Take him and trim him in new apparel, and give that to shame there to his farewell. Come on your way, wit, be of good cheer. After stormy clouds cometh weather clear. Who lists to mark now this chance here done? May see what wit is without reason. What was this wit better than an ass, being from reason strayed as he was? But let that pass now, since he is well punished, and thereby I trust meetly well monished. Yea, and I like him never the worse, I, though shame hath handled him shamefully. For like as if wit had proudly bent him to resist shame, to make shame absent him, I would have thought then that wit had been, as they, as the saying is, and daily seen, past shame once, and past all amendment. So contrary, since he did relent to shame, when shame punished him even ill, I have, I say, good hope in him still. I think, as I thought, if join they can, my daughter well bestowed on this man. But all the doubt now is to think how my daughter taketh this. For I may tell you, I think she knew this wit even as well as she seemed here to know him no deal. For lack of knowledge and science, there is none. Wherefore, she knew him. And thereupon, his misbehavior perchance even striking, her heart against him, she now misliking, as women oft times will be hard-hearted, will, will be the stranger to be reverted. This must I help. Reason must now walk on wit's part with my science to talk. A near way to know her I, whereby my son's coming prevent now must I. Perchance I may bring my daughter hither. If so, I doubt not to join them together. I thank God, yet at last I have found him. I was afraid some mischance have drowned him. My master, wit, with whom I've spoken. Yea, and delivered token for token, and have another to science again. A heart of gold, signifying plain that science hath won wit's heart forever, whereby I trust by my good endeavor to that good lady, so sweet and so shortly. A marriage between them shall see ye shortly. Lo, sir. Now ye be entered again towards that passage where doth remain tediousness, your mortal enemy. Now may ye choose whether ye will try your hand again on that tyrant stout, or else walking a little about. Nay, for God's passion, sir, let me meet him. Ye see, I am able now for to greet him. This sword of comfort sent for my love. Upon her enemy needs must I prove. Then forth there, and turn on your right hand, up that mount before ye shall see stand. But hear ye, if your enemy chance to rise, follow my counsel in any wise. Let study and diligence flee their touch, the stroke of tediousness, and then couch themselves, as I told ye, ye wot how. Yea, sir, for that how, mark the proof now. To mark it, indeed, here will I abide, to see what chance of them will be tied. <gasps> for here cometh the pith, lo, of this journey, that mountain, before which they must assay, is called in Latin Mons Parnassus, which mountain, as old authors discuss, who attaineth once to sleep on that mount, Lady Science his own he may count. But for he come there, ye shall see fought, a fight with no less policy wrought, than strength, I trow, 
if that may be praised. Who are you? Hark! Out, ye caitiffs! The fiend is raised! Out, ye villains! Be ye come again! How about ye wretches? Fleecers! Ye twain! They flee not far hence. Turn again, study. Now, diligence. Well said. Hold fast now. He fleeth. Then follow. With his own weapon now work him sorrow. Wit lieth at receipt. Go, oh, go. Oh. Oh. Your hawk, he dieth. Where strength lacketh, policy supplieth. I can ye thank, sirs, this was well done. Nay, yours is the deed. To you is the thing. I can ye thank all. This was well done. How say ye, man, is this field well won? <laughs> yea, by my faith, so saith your dear heart. Why, where is she? That well, upon... now thou art? Upon here, yonder mountain on high, she saw ye strike that head from the body, whereby ye have won her body and all, in token whereof you see here ye shall, a gown of knowledge, wherein you must receive her here straight. But sayest thou just? So just I say that, except ye hide ye, or ye be ready, she will be by ye. Ha, hold, present unto her this head here. And give me warning when she cometh near. Instruct instruction. Will, will you help to devise to trim this gear now in, in the best wise? Uh, give me that gown and come with me all. Oh, how this gear to the purpose doth fall. Oh, master, master, where be ye now? Here, confidence. What tidings bringst thou? Bringst thou? Uh, my lady at hand here doth by thee. Bid her welcome. What do you hide? Thee? Welcome, mine own. Welcome, mine own. Oh, lady dear, be ye so near to be known. My heart you cheer, your voice to hear. Welcome, mine own. As ye rejoice to hear my voice flow me thus blown, so in my choice I show my voice to be your own. Then draw we near to see and hear my love long grown. Where is my dear? Here I appear to see my own. To tr see and try your love truly till death be flown. Lo, here I am, that ye may spy, I am your own. Then let us meet, my love so sweet, halfway here thrown. I will not sleep, my love to greet, welcome my own. Welcome my own. Welcome, Welcome my own. Welcome, mine own, with all my whole heart, which shall be your own, till death us depart. I trust, lady, this not even, even since knit. I trust the same, for since ye have smit down my great enemy, Tediousness, ye have won me for ever, doubtless, although ye have won a clog with all. A clog, sweetheart? What? Such as doth fall to all men that join themselves in marriage, in keeping their wives a careful carriage. Careful? Nay, lady, that care shall employ no clog, but a key of my most joy to keep <sighs> you, sweetheart, as shall be fit, shall be no care, but most joy to wit. Well, yet I say, mark well what I say, my presence bringeth you a clog, no nay. 
not in the keeping of me only, but in the use of science chiefly. For I, science, am in this degree, as all or most part of women be. If ye use me well, in a good sort, then shall I be your joy and comfort. But if ye use me not well, then doubt me, for sure ye were better than without me. Why, lady, think you me such a wit as being affianced by you, and yet would misuse ye? Nay, if ye doubt that, here is one loveth thee more than somewhat. If wit misuse ye at any season, correct me then your own father, reason. Ho, oh, daughter, can you desire any more? What need these doubts? Avoid them, therefore. I like in, sir, but under your favour, this doubt our daughter doth well to gather. For a good warning now, at the beginning, what wit in the end shall look for in winning? Which shall be this, sir, if science here, which is God's gift, be used mere unto God's honour and profit both, of you and your neighbour which goeth, in her of kind to do no good to all, this seen to. Experience, I, shall set you forth, wit by her to employ, double increase to your double joy. But if you use her contrary wise to her good nature, and so devise to evil effects to rest, to rye her, yea, and cast her off and set naught by her, be sure I, experience shall then declare you so before God and man, that this talent from you shall be taken, and you punished for your gain forsaken. Once warned, half armed, folks say, namely when experience shall warn a man, then time to take heed. Mother experience, touching your daughter, my dear heart, science, as I am certain that to abuse her I breed mine own sorrow, and well to use her I increase my joy, and so to make it God's grace is ready if I will take it. Then by ye count me no wit at all, let never these doubts into your head fall. But as yourself experience, clearing all doubts at length, so, till time appearing, trust ye with me in God. And, sweetheart, while your father reason taketh with part to receive God's grace as God shall send it, doubt ye not our joy till life's end end it. Well then, for the end of all doubts past, and to that end which ye spake of last, among our wedding matters here rendering, the end of our lives would be in remembering, which remembrance, wit, shall sure defend ye from the misuse of science, and send ye the gain my mother to mind did call, joy without end, that wish I to all, well said, and as ye, daughter, wish it, that joy to all folk in general, so wish I, reason, the same. But yet first in this life wish I here to fall, to our most noble king and queen in especial, to their honorable counsel, and then to all the rest, such joy as long may rejoice them all best. Oh, Amen. 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 And there will be a song here, Remember Me, but we don't know what it what it hasn't been very well remembered so we can't thus ends the play uh yeah it's um it yeah it it, it runs at a decent old lick uh and it's got some really nice set pieces that could take a lot longer than they do um uh and i mean the tedious fight the fight with tediousness is is surely a tour de force and uh i mean we weren't reading the stage direction so you come on with the the monster's head um and 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 deliver it to your lady love um you know it's just i, I just it, i wonder where the science sort of goes oh thank you thank you. i'll just put it o over here that there, there, there it goes um uh, may, maybe a little further away that's that's lovely we won't just throw it in the bin immediately after you've gone that's that's yeah we'll pr we'll treasure it we'll treasure it absolutely um but yeah it's it's um yeah and uh, the the 
ignorance uh, and uh, yeah. idleness scene could go on for as long as the audience find it funny, uh, frankly, because, I mean, uh, we almost got in a loop and we were reading off a script. It's one of those things where you could that that could go on pretty much forever. Um, so, yeah, even, despite the absence of an opening, which potentially isn't desperately long, it's probably about 10 minutes, 15 minutes worth of material um you know uh we've we've there's there's a lot here and it has been performed in modern times uh, the, oh. so it has been given a uh a, a modern spin i mean there are obviously problematic things in the text uh that we've already identified in previous sessions um because of the the, the disguising that is done to wit uh doesn't come across well uh because they they basically uh, cover him in soot uh and that's mm -hmm. that's not a look we really want to uh, uh go with associations but i've always f felt with this since we first read it that this is very much i i like the idea that it's basically clowns that they turn wit into a clown that ignorance is actually a clown and they they because uh, there's also a slightly problematic edge to the nature of the character of ignorance um and if you, you're making him li literally a clown and then you turn wit into a clown and that gives you a reason to put makeup on their face, a big red nose, and they're clearly not the thing that science had bought from the catalogue. Um, uh, definitely a question of which direction to swipe on that one. Uh, thoughts in the room. Uh, I've, I've, I've basically reiterated things I've said in previous sessions there, So, I'd, 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 uh, but uh, I, I thought I'd put them in it definitely flows quite well uh kyle i loved um the uh honest recreation and um was it uh idleness fight no is it it's not idleness is it mm, was mm. it idleness oh it is idleness yeah they they, they have I a sort of part. debate off um at each other um yeah there's a sort of mic drop quality to bits mm. of that um that, that are really nice uh, Lynn, I wonder how uh, how much of a problem the fact that um, particularly wit and science, the words wit and science have experienced some some lexical shift and they are much broader terms in this period than they are now. I mean, science is is now is like experimental science that studies the physical world. It was more like sort of knowledge in general in this period and and wit, especially here i think um wit is a certain kind of cleverness um that that doesn't include sort of cognition or mental capacity in general um which is which is what it meant in this period so i wonder if the the names are going to be a little bit confusing would would it be a good idea to consider changing them or changing them or glossing them in some way at the beginning of the you know the bit we'd have to write um to to set up the rest of the play uh, i mean i don't know how much of a join uh we can use the other wit and science variations that we have after this whether we can use that material or whether that that cut and shunt wouldn't quite land and the, the car would sort of break and and uh, you know you you'd, you you wouldn't be able to get any insurance for it uh, i'm going <laughs> off on a tangent here um but yeah uh the, i think yeah i think there is a bit of a, a bit of that but i think yeah maybe a gloss just something that we put in at the beginning to make sure that that's clear um because yeah, yeah. i think we might not be able to find tidy names that scan mm -hmm. um, well and, yeah and the other thing is that we don't even really have words for that anymore mm. what it meant and what science meant we really those concepts kind of overlap different concepts that we have now we just we yeah so those words are more hard a to science translate. rather than a science if that's yeah of yeah and sense, well, sense. uh aliki isn't it sort of intelligence and knowledge more or less mm. more or less mm. yeah yeah uh, and that's the thing is because, of course, they overlap with with some of the other sort of elements of this person, because wit, you know, is partly also defined by the people who are going along with him. So study and diligence and, you know, the, these people are supposed to keep him on track. So he's he, he in a sense, what the character is, is is a schoolboy um, who has to be kept on 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 the straight and narrow. Uh, okay, and, you know, that's okay. that's the lesson. Um this is problem with allegorical figures because of course they sh they change you know because of course he changes to something slightly different later on because he, he he does stupid things um um and and so ends up in a in a different different situation 
other thoughts. Yes, uh, 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 about what we. Uh, I, I say I, I. I've got a fairly good idea what I'd like to do with this now. I, I think I've got a good idea. But other thoughts in the room, Eric. Yeah, a lot of those sketches just feel like you can isolate them as well, like mm -hmm. the ignorance, in, ignorancy, uh, and. Um, idleness one or the mm -hmm. honest recreation and idleness one Th those actually feel like you could isolate them and just like do something with them just because they're fun mm -hmm. as opposed to using this whole context of like a of a play that we don't have the beginning of um and yeah i i just like the confidence is so busy that he's <laughs> running back and forth and can't actually find anything uh, or anyone um yeah he's an interesting character mm -hmm. in my head uh, Alan. Yeah, I, I must admit, one thing I found strange was that for the character name of Tediousness, that first sequence where you got that really bouncy rhyme um, mm -hmm. thing going on didn't actually seem to fit with the name of the character. Well, it's, it is this, this ultimate contradiction, isn't it? If you could write a very tedious speech for mm. Tediousness, but then it'd be quite tedious and no, no one in the audience would enjoy it. <laughs> so... Well, I mean, I, I think that sort of works. Um, mm. Tediousness sort of bashes everyone into submission um, kind of quality. Yeah. Um, How many more appalling double rhymes can I manage to fit in? Mm. And of course, you know, we have this uh, 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 panto quality to tediousness is, you know, he is the monster to be vanquished mm -hmm. and, and he, you know, initially he wins and then uh, they have to bring wit back to life, which is, again, very mummer's play-ish, something that we, mm -hmm. we get in uh, other traditions that, that don't we don't really get that many examples of during during, uh, you know, surviving from this period. So it's sort of tying into that it does keep sort of flitting from different modes i mean that they, they were talking about there were these isolatable scenes but and yet it manages to tie them all together they're not just random scenes that are riffing they're all integrated into the plot and that's done quite well even when we're going to the the, the slightly less interesting stuff with uh when, when we get more courtly towards the end and i'm sort of going yeah. but at least they're singing so i'm i'm sticking with it a bit um but yeah there's there's it gets a bit uh tedious oddly enough there uh eric yeah also the well i guess also there are other like interludes that we've done that overlap where you feel like and know like um when does it infants or like um um uh, i think it was nature or, or i can't remember exactly what the title was where you've got like being bestowed man being bestowed with all these gifts and still choosing to be like slothful lecherous and all that stuff and then they realize at old age that they actually need reason to function and all that stuff mm. so it's kind of it's very it's quite similar to other stuff that we've done but i think this one is a lot more fun <laughs> yes, I mean, it absolutely fits into that morality interlude tradition that, yeah, we've got lots of other examples of which I think all your examples were exactly right. Uh, Lynn? Uh, just from going back, um, as a teacher, I just want to voice my appreciation for the insight that tedium is the enemy of learning. We have to overcome tedium to learn. You know, it's not a big heroic thing, education, um, you know? I think that's something that my students are learning. It's just like doing the homework is kind of boring and you have to apply yourself every day. And, you know, the all-nighter is not really going to gonna educate you. It's doing a little bit every day, even though it's not very exciting. Um, Roger Ascham, who was a, a tutor of Queen Elizabeth, had a great metaphor. So if you try to splash too much into a shallow bowl all at once, most of it splashes out. But if you drop it in, drop by drop, you can fill it to the rim and even slightly over the rim. But it has to be this gradual process. And that's something that students are still learning, even in their early adult years, is that it's this constant, slow process. Of, and it can be boring. Mm. Yeah, I particularly like the, the 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 study always has a headache. It's like because he's always <laughs> hunched over a book with a candle, so he's really, really you know he's got light, attention, you know, he's got a tension headache all the time. Um, <laughs> and I thought that was that that was really well observed. High strain actually. headache, you know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kyle, then Eric, uh, and then we're going to start winding up. I just speaking of good messages, I I, I thought they were going to start bashing women and marriage and that towards the end but they i thought it was kind of nice 
pro-woman message in the if you treat her well she'll behave well kind of I mean not that that's very pro but you know it seemed nice anyway compared to what you normally get with marriage and yeah, women. And, <laughs> and especially something that's designed for boys to be playing um you know it could it could have gone down far worse I mean there, there's some mm -hmm. issues about clogs but um we'll uh we'll we'll, we'll uh, worry about that another day uh by the way I'm not going to go around the whole room for final thoughts so if you have anything just wave uh Eric um, yeah, a study in my head was just kind of like the kid who doesn't like going outside because they have asthma or like something like a hay fever. <laughs> um, so kind of, it, it, you know, just kind of being dragged along because they're called study and they can help. <laughs> it's like, yeah. look, I have all my books. I brought them. <laughs> it's like, that's why I have a headache. Yeah. And, and it's it's interesting as well that we've got later on when, uh, you know, we've got uh, science uh encountering you know fame favor riches uh worship etc who you know turn up and go hey look at all this stuff no i get thee behind me uh things um and and it, it's interesting that actually Sion science has a little bit of a character journey as well not as much as wit and it's partly there to sort of even out the gaps in the service um but it is there and that's something that maybe we could add to the the opening we haven't written yet anyway i am going to have to close this session very swiftly uh so all that remains thank all the wonderful readers for all their wonderful reading thank you very much and goodbye dog bark